Good evening. Watching the news at 7.30 on ATV, I'm Raymond Yeung. And I'm Joyce Wu. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Man arrested after posing as doctor for weeks at Kuntong Hospital. Government hints at more open nomination process as time runs out to secure LegCo vote. Australian police claim to have foiled terror plot and arrest five people. Police say a man arrested for impersonating a doctor at a Kowloon hospital was actually a mobile phone salesman. For weeks, he posed as a doctor using a temporary pass and stolen uniforms. Marcus Chi reports. Police officers escorted 24-year-old man Mo Man Yip to Kowloon City Magistracy this morning. He's accused of impersonating a doctor. The court did not offer him bail due to his lengthy criminal record. Mo, who is currently on probation, has committed multiple robberies and burglaries and was released from jail half a year ago. He also has a history of jumping bail. He's being held at Seal Lamb Psychiatric Centre and is due back in court on 30th of April. Mo has allegedly been posing as a doctor at United Christian Hospital in Kun Tong since March. He obtained temporary passes by claiming to have lost his staff card and stole white coats from changing rooms. He visited wards and examined patients, but police say there's no evidence to suggest that he's treated anyone. Hospital staff became suspicious and alerted security guards who turned him over to the police on Thursday. Mo reportedly told officers that he had studied medicine in Australia. However, police say that's not true and he sells mobile phones in Hong Kong. Health Chief Koen Man said today he's taking the case very seriously as the safety of patients was at stake. He said the hospital authority will follow up the case and work to prevent anyone impersonating doctors in the future. Marcus Chi, ATV News. The government is planning to reveal its political reform package next week, and officials are still scrambling to get support from the pan-democrats. But with both sides sticking to their guns, it's unlikely to get passed in LegCo. Winner Wong reports. There are only a few days left before the government officially releases its political reform package on Wednesday, so time is running out for officials to persuade at least four pan-democrat lawmakers to vote for it to get it passed. Taking to the airwaves this morning, one of the ministers in charge of political reform, Raymond Tam, said the government has been meeting a number of pan-democrats over the past few days. According to him, the atmosphere at those meetings has been good. He added that officials are working on organizing direct talks between the central government and opposition lawmakers. If both sides can agree that it's not about testing each other's bottom line and more about direct meaningful conversation, then I'm sure there's a bigger chance talks can take place, he said. Beijing's framework for Hong Kong's political reform states that the nomination committee will remain at 1,200 and be made up of people from four major sectors. The idea of carving out seats from other sectors to form new ones has been floating around. For example, a Liberal Party proposal submitted to the government last month suggested decreasing the agriculture and fishery sector seats from 60 to 20. The vacated 40 seats would then be equally divided between a new youth and women's sector. But Tam poured cold water on the idea. The sector we take seats away from will very likely get angry and fall out with the government, he said. It's unlikely to happen. He also hinted that the package they are about to table to LegCo will be more liberal than the current one. Another political reform official, Rimsky Yun, said that if the package goes through, it will be the method used to pick out a chief executive in 2017 and after. But he insisted there is room for change when necessary. Meanwhile, veteran pan-Democrat Martin Lee is optimistic that problems can still be solved within this tight time frame if Beijing and pan-Democrats are willing to conduct friendly talks. Speaking to the press today, Lee said people in Hong Kong wrongly assume leaders in the capital are blindly unreasonable, illogical and unwilling to face the truth. I'm hoping that the new leader who has now gathered power unto himself will not gather power only because he wants to be a dictator. I'm hoping that he is now getting power in order to bring in reform to China and therefore also reform to Hong Kong. But if I'm wrong, so be it. But that doesn't mean that we should now consider what to do in relation to this package 
which will soon be brought before Let's Go, on the basis of giving in. Lee stressed that pan-Democrats have constantly been asked to compromise their views on political reform over the years and asked why they are always the ones who are expected to give in. Meanwhile, CPPCC delegates Lao Tzu Kai said today that whether the package will go through depends on pan-Democrats being willing to accept it, but he's pessimistic. Win Wong, ATV News. A top economist says the effect of the new restrictions on Shenzhen residents visiting Hong Kong will have little negative impact on the city's economy. However, he's concerned that the government isn't doing enough to attract more overseas visitors. The move by mainland authorities to restrict visits by Shenzhen residents to once a week was welcomed by many last week. The government estimates that it will mean visitor numbers will be slashed by 4.6 million a year. However, economists argue that even if the government estimate doubles, the new rule will have little impact on Hong Kong. Uh, I don't see any significant damage to the economy. According to uh, the research done by us okay, recently, we found that like, uh, if the number of uh, tourist arrivals drops by 20%, say uh, that is equivalent to about 9 million tourist arrivals. And uh, the reduction in GDP this year will be from 2.5% to 2% only, which is about like a $10 billion loss in GDP. And the unemployment rate drops from, uh, goes up by 3.5% to 3.53%. Uh, that is equivalent to about uh, an increase in 1,200 people uh, layoff. Okay? So you can see that uh, the two figures are, lo- are not alarming. But Kwan accused the government of not doing enough to attract tourists. At the, at the same time, the government has to think about the long-term development of the industry, the tourism industry. And they got to think about the quality in, term, in terms of the quantity. For the past few years, we focused too much on the number of tourists, uh, mainland Chinese uh, tourist arrivals. Kwan says he's alarmed that the number of international visitors has not increased. Police are investigating a fire that broke out early this morning in Xiang Shui Po. Residents reported the small fire at Yam Chao Street at around 2 o'clock. The blaze damaged the belongings of some street sleepers on a footbridge, but nobody was hurt. Police are treating the fire as suspicious. Australian police claim to have foiled a terror plot after arresting five teenagers who allegedly were planning to attack officers. But first, now a roundup of international news. A former aide to late Iraqi President Saddam Hussein has reportedly been killed. Isat Ibrahim al Duri, a former top deputy to Saddam Hussein turned Sunni militant leader, has been killed in a security operation in Iraq, according to the country's state run media. He apparently died in fighting in Salahuddin province, north of Baghdad, but his supporters have denied the claim. Duri was one of the most high profile officials in Saddam Hussein's Ba'ath Party and successfully evaded capture after the US led invasion. He was the king of clubs in the famous pack of cards the U.S. issued, featuring wanted members of Saddam Hussein's regime after its defeat. He led a key force behind the recent rise of Islamic State. Police in Australia say they have foiled an Islamic State-inspired plot to carry out an attack at an event to commemorate World War I. Five suspects were detained, two of whom were arrested for alleged terrorism-related offences. Authorities claim the men were planning to target police at the event in Melbourne next week. Uh, There were a series of raids uh, in uh, metropolitan Melbourne. Uh, Five people were arrested. We're expecting three to be charged. Uh, Two uh, will be charged with preparing a terrorist act. We believe that the attack was inspired by, or the potential attack was inspired by the Daesh death cult uh, in the Middle East. This morning's operation is another reminder of the threats facing our community, our state and our nation. The threat that comes from violent extremism and radicalisation. It's a threat that confronts us all. It's a threat that challenges us. And in truth, it's a a threat that we don't really properly uh, understand. 
About 200 officers took part in the counter-terrorism operation in the city earlier today. Dozens of people were killed when a suicide bomber exploded in Afghanistan's eastern city of Jalalabad. More than a hundred people were injured in the blast outside a bank where government workers were collecting their salaries. Authorities say the explosion was caused by a suicide bomber on a motorbike. Another bomb was discovered nearby and destroyed in a controlled explosion. Taliban insurgents denied responsibility. A large natural gas pipeline exploded in Fresno, California, causing a huge fire that injured up to 15 people. It was not immediately clear what caused the explosion at the Fresno County Sheriff's gun range, but authorities say it happened when a construction crew was working nearby. Witnesses say the flames shot over 30 meters into the air. Uh, right now the fire is contained and we're going to um, manage that until they get that gas line shut off completely. The incident prompted the closure of nearby roads and railway lines.